Can you hear me now, dear? Yeah, can you hear me? I can indeed. Can you see behind me very nice? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just turn off my alarm. I put an alarm on to make sure that I wasn't late for our date. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, well, good afternoon, Christine. Hello. Uh, I suppose there's a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've room for improvement, obviously. I'll be wearing a shirt and stuff for a proper way of doing it. Um, it was a couple of questions that, funnily enough, today uh, mm -hmm. uh, came through. I was talking to a student, or a potential student, should I say, um, and she's a hairdresser. Right. Uh, and as you know, we've had many hairdressers have come to the course, and many have you know, wanted to apply, wanted to join the course. What advice would you give to a hairdresser thinking about doing the course? Um, do you now are we talking about sort of advice in the present climate as in uh, what to do research wise before we start the course or are we talking about general like the, the hairdressers that we've had previously that have come and done the course that have oh, gone I, on would, I would say I would say general you know as in uh, as if as if it's a per you know it's a completely normal world the same world that we're in and it's a hairdresser thinking about doing uh, a four-month course and you know should should i do the four month course i'm a hairdresser would it would it help what would it do um okay well firstly as we know um we have a huge success rate with hairdressers taking out on the course uh, i don't think there's been one of our hairdressers that we've taken on yet that hasn't gone on to do very good things um and this kind of i think leads me on to that thing that, that i think when you've got your hairdressing background I mean, obviously, the hardest thing, as we know, that we have to teach is being working within somebody's personal space. And I think, you know, as a hairdresser, you're automatically um, geared to kind of do that. So I've got, I've got things coming through here. Um, you've, you're automatically geared to kind of sort of um, be in people's personal space. So you've kind of already got the advantage of being um, your ability to talk to people about how they look and your communication things. It, it, You've, already, you've got so many things that, have already, that are really hard to teach people, if you yes. like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think hairdressers are incredibly easy to place afterwards. They really are, after the course, they really are easy to place. Would you, would you say, though, uh, what I've noticed, even though, as you know, I don't have a, you know, the hair or makeup background, but um, the difference between a hairdresser and a hair and makeup artist? Is there is there a difference? Uh, it depends. I think I think yeah. the difference is where you've kind of got the experience of being on set. I mean, the, the the one thing that is kind of hard to teach hairdressers is to to get them to step back from making people look like they've just been to a hairdresser. Um, I think I think one of the most crucial things you have to remember about what we're doing is we're telling a story. We're bringing the page to life. Um, you know, that person might not have been outside the house for a week. Um, they might have been, you know, you know, I'm sure there's going to be many um, films about, you know, us all being housebound for the next two or three months or whatever. Yes. Um, you, you know, it's like they, they'd have like sort of two or three months worth of hair roots. And, yeah. you, know, you know, that's that kind of thing of yes, what, what yes. we have to do as a hair and makeup artist as opposed to a hairdresser is we have to bring the story to life. And I think with hairdressers, their kind of their primary concern is doing exactly what the client wants them to do. So the client wants to walk out of a salon or their their hairdressers, or whatever, um, looking and feeling great with new hair color, new haircut, new blow dry, whatever. Um, and with what we're doing, you know, it's very much about creating a story. The other thing um, that I think is really important. And I think it's really paramount in the present, um, in, in our day and age, is that hairdressers, um, especially our younger hairdressers, I'm not talking about the old, older hairdressers who would be like my age and such like, um, but the younger hairdressers now, they're, they're kind of not really taught. They very much, even if they do city and guilds at college, they very much sort of um, sketch over the hair setting and you know the principle of hairdressing like hairdressing as the craft is kind of being forgotten and what we have to do is we have to we have to teach them um you know like if we're doing a film that is set in the 50s or the 60s 
then, you know, knowing how to do the full Italian, the half Italian, you know, the arch-stroke hairstyle is it, really paramount. It, it's, it's like they need to know how to put rollers in. You know, even if they're doing a film in the 70s where, you know, perms are really high fashion, you know, they, they like not many people are even taught how to put a per perm rollers in yeah, now. Yeah. And, and it's also that, you know, when I was hairdresser um, many years back, um, you know, you kind of did everything. You know, you coloured, you permed, you cut, you blow dried. Um, now with uh, the, the hairdressers nowadays, they tend to be colour technicians or cutting te technicians. Do you see what I mean? They, they kind of group themselves in a, in a way so, so they're not specialising in anything in particular. Yes, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, yeah. correct, uh, correct, correct that. They are specialising in one avenue of what, what they're doing. It's funny how uh, that expression, you, you can take the makeup designer out of film, but you can't take the film out of the makeup designer. It's interesting how you said about already now, you know, films will be happening about this situation now and, you know, three months of roots showing and all these things, oh, you know, that th you're thinking straight away of, you know, uh, as in the, the story, which uh, yeah. Yeah, hadn't even entered my mind. It's really quite funny. But I think it's because you're kind of geared to look at it that way. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, I mean, obviously I've got all of my mates sort of emailing me and sort of like, you know, FaceTiming me and sort of saying, what can they do? You know, a lot of their, their kids are kind of coming up in, you know, getting spots and, and things like that, you know, and, and it's, it's that sort of thing that, you know, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of things you kind of start looking at. And, and you know, the bottom line is, is, is there will be a lot of stories about this particular um, pandemic. Um, there's, there's got to be, you know, apart from anything else, you know, you've, you've got the whole world's writers uh, sort of like locked up in their house at the moment. There's going to yeah. be some fantastic material at the end of this, I tell you. No, no. It's, uh, uh, funny enough, the, the, the next question that, that someone asked me was, um, you know, about preparing. And, and in, in particular, it was about, you know, I've been looking at this, and I've been looking at a bit of research. But even when I mentioned about research and detail that, you know, the person didn't, a bit like myself hadn't seen you know oh i hadn't thought about that and it, it's that thing of people think they observe but they don't really they don't look at something in detail or you know looking at a face and slowly looking at the whole features everything rather than just say oh it's it was a you know it's female she's blonde and she's about 35 and that's it it stops there but it, you know it's it's the detail isn't it it's, it's definitely the detail and it's kind of, it's something that does come, you know, unfortunately this is something that comes with time and practice. I think the longer that your designing looks on people, you know, it's like, it's like I'll always say to directors, you know, when we're talking about, you know, we'll, we'll kind of do our little chat about how they see certain characters and things and the actor might not have been cast. And, and you know, it's always kind of sort of really vital at this point that you're just like, you know, until that actor is sitting in front of me, you really don't know what your what you can bring to the table and likewise what your actor can bring to the table you know because actors can't, you know you can't underestimate what they can do to themselves you know to yes. to um to, to to make it all work you know you've only got to look at tom hardy and legend for for that to you know be very paramount you know a lot of that was him kind of puffing himself up and you know changing his voice and and doing what he does as a brilliant actor I suppose yeah, that's that but that's confidence in in allowing giving the actor space and time to 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 allow themselves to to do something you know to 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 have input into the character yeah. yes that, that's it I think definitely but I, I do think you know I'll, I'll say it a million times I think you can never underestimate a good actor you really can't no, yeah, uh, yeah. And likewise, you can never underestimate a, a, a good makeup designer and, and makeup artists as well. You know, I mean, like sort of what, you know, even on the job that I'm doing at the moment, you know, even the, the hiatus one, uh, the one, the nevers, you know, so some of the things. So when I go into the crowd room and see what some of the guys are doing there, you know, just with the wigs and such like, I mean, the, the work is outstanding. It really is. And I mean, you know, to this day, I'll look at, you know, I, th I, I class myself as a hairdresser first and foremost, because that's, you know, what I've always done. But sometimes I'll go into the crowd room, you know, and, and look at some of the designs that they've done on wigs. And I'm just like, oh, do you mind? Can I just take this apart? Do you know what I mean? So I literally want to, to take it down so I can see how they have put it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but again, I, I do know that that is, you know, 
having that, well, it's obviously years and years of experience, but it's that confidence to say, well, actually, I, I, oh, I don't know how to do that, or I didn't know that or something. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not bad not to know, you know, no one can know everything. So it's not a bad thing to go, well, how did you do that? I'd love to know. It's, it's, it's definitely not. I mean, you're kind of expected to, to know every, everything or let's, let's say rather, you, I mean, I always think that a part of being a good designer is knowing how capable your team are and who you can draft in to do certain things. Yes. You know, it's like if, if I'm, you know, when I'm sort of like looking at things, you know, quite often, uh, you know, that the gray area between prosthetics and things where I know that Christian would have the answer to, you know, to, to what my question would be. You know, and sometimes he's not there at those meetings, and and I would be inclined to sort of say, okay, let me let me just write notes for that, and then what I'll do is I'll email or, or call Christian afterwards and say, oh, they've asked about you know these hanging bodies that have got you know sort of things spilling out of them and da -da 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 -da, yeah, yeah. and they want these to be doing something in the shop. Can we do that? You know, and he's the one that will kind of say would 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 have an experience that is closely related to that. You know, so I think I think one of the um, you, you can't you can't be expected to know everything, but you you can be expected as a designer to pull everything off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you <laughs> said, having having <laughs> having having the team around you uh, and and you know yeah. giving. I suppose again, I, I don't know other designers. Well, I do, obviously we've had we do have quite a few designers coming to teach at, at the at the academy, um, mm. but I suppose each one works differently and allowing their team to do i remember jeremy jeremy woodhead saying a very similar thing of like you know he's got his team and the team does and and you have to rely on your team to do these things you know because mm -hmm. he's out designing and doing looking after a, you know a person or whatever you know doing something you're designing yeah. the film well i think i think it's also the way that things are going now i mean more and more often now on films as a designer you don't really get to be standing by on set i mean you know I, we've got a very strict thing on 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 set with us. I mean, Lisa's my kind of key on set person, and Charmaine obviously is, is the crowd supervisor. But you know, Lisa's sort of in charge of everything that happens on the set. She's my eyes on set, if you like, because most of the time on films now, and even on, on the Nevers as well, I'm kind of sort of like looking at the next wave of actors that are coming in, and I'm kind of looking at the next scripts and things, you know. And everybody's expected to be breaking down the script, but ultimately, you know. I'm the one that's expected to prep them. Um, yes. You know, I expect everybody to know about the continuity and everything mm. once we start filming. But when, when it comes to what's expected on a, any given day in, in that story, I, I, I know that it's my job to have everything there. 